Okay, so are you good with working with numbers? Well, if you are, that is fantastic. And this problem right here should be very easy for you to do only in your head. So the rule here is no calculator. Actually, there's a couple of rules. No calculators, no paper, no pencil, no nothing, just your head. That is enough of a supercomputer for uh, you to figure this out. But of course, you have to have some basic knowledge of numbers. Let's take a look at the question. We have seven times parentheses, two to the eighth divided by two to the sixth, and parentheses, what is this all equal to? So again, no calculators, no paper, no pencil, but if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then I'll of course, I'll show you exactly how easy it is to solve this problem only using mental mathematics. Okay, but uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help uh, learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now one more time, uh, this particular problem has no time limit, so it's perfectly fine maybe to pause the video and stare at this because you are doing mental mathematics. But uh, if you did this right, you came up with this answer right here, which is 28. All right, now, how did you do? Well, if you got this right, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you could brag to your friends and family that indeed you're pretty sharp with numbers and basic mental calculations. Now, some of you might be saying, well, this is just a waste of time. If I'm going to do this problem, I'll just get my calculator. Well, oftentimes, um, you know, we don't have a calculator available to us. You know, of course, we're always with our phone and our phone has everything that we could possibly want. You know, in this world, all this information, it is a supercomputer in and of itself. But what happens if you don't have your phone or what happens if you're walking and just want to do some fast, fast mental calculation? Well, this is very good for your brain and very good to keep your math skills sharp. But this is not that difficult. And if you didn't get this right, don't be discouraged. Uh, think of this as just like a little puzzle or a riddle. But let's get into how to figure this out. But uh, the first thing we have to uh, recognize here is that we need to understand a couple things about basic mathematics. And the first thing that we need to understand is something called the order of operations. Okay, what does that mean? Well, uh, here we have a math problem and we have different mathematical operations going on. So in math, things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, these are called mathematical operators. And of course, we even have some powers here in our problem. And depending on what order we do a problem, in other words, what um, whether we add first and then maybe multiply second, divide third, if we take different orders, uh, different a different order or take different orders will come up with different values. Of course, there's only one correct order to do mathematical operations, and it could be defined by this little lovely phrase right here, PEMDAS. And PEMDAS is just a basic acronym. And uh, if you never heard of this, well, this is an excellent little video to make sure you understand this because you cannot do basic mathematics without a sound understanding of this. This is not that hard. So let me go ahead and explain this uh, right now. Okay, so PEMDAS, these letters stand for something, and it's a checklist that goes from left to right. So let's go ahead and define what this uh, stands for. So P stands for parentheses. So anytime you see parentheses like this in your problem, if there uh, are parentheses, sometimes there isn't, and these little brackets like this or these kind of squiggly brackets like that also count for parentheses. So if you see parentheses, and of course we have parentheses, we have to start there first. In other words, we're going to do all the math inside of the parentheses. So obviously we're going to be doing this as a first step. Okay, so that is what our P stands for. E stands for exponents. Now let's take this two to the eighth power. This little number up here, eight, is called the exponent when it comes to a power. This big number down here is called the base. The entire thing is a power. So two to the eighth power, the eight is exponent, but E stands for 
exponents, but it means powers. So if you see any powers, you're going to do those next. Of course, we have powers in our problem here. So hopefully uh, you're saying, okay, I'm getting this, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Now, M, D, A, and S. Let me just tell you what this stands for. M stands for multiplication. D stands for division. A stands for addition. S stands for subtraction. So uh, most people, um, and this is a huge common uh, a misunderstanding uh, for a lot of people in mathematics, is they think that, okay, we're going to do all multiplication next, and then once all the multiplication is done, we'll move on to division, et cetera, et cetera. And that would make sense because I did tell you this is a checklist that goes from left to right, but that's not how it works, okay? So the way this works is we go to M and D. So we're going to do any multiplication or division, whatever we see first from left to right. So if I have a multiplication problem and then division, I'm going to do it this way, multiplication, then division. But if I have division first, let's say like 10 divided by 2 times 7 or something like that, I'm going to do division because that's what I see first from left to right and then multiplication. So this is a very, very common place where students or uh, people make an error when it comes to basic mathematical problems like this. All right, so A and S stand for addition and subtraction, and it works the same way as multiplication and division. Okay, so you got to have an understanding of the order of operations here because we have multiplication, division, and powers, and parentheses. So obviously, we're going to start here first. And again, we're not going to be using our calculators, so you just kind of have to imagine that you're you know, looking at this and you're saying, oh, I remember that guy on YouTube. He said something about PEMDAS, so the P is, uh, you know, you're probably thinking... PEMDAS here, and here it comes to mind. All right, parentheses, I got parentheses, so maybe I should focus my mind here first. And that's exactly what you need to do. We need to figure out what 2 to the 8th divided by 2 to the 6th is equal to. All right, now, if you're not comfortable working with powers, this is not difficult at all because this problem is achievable. Uh, in other words, it's pretty easy to do um, using just mental mathematics, but we have to understand what powers uh, mean. So let's go ahead and first interpret this part right here. We have 2 to the 8th divided by 2 to the 6th. So 2 to the 8th divided by 2 to the 6th. What's another way we can write this? Well, we can write it this way, 2 to the 8th divided by 2 to the 6th. So when you have a fraction, you can always write your fraction your numerator divided by denominator this way, 2 to the 8th divided by 2 to the 6th. You could just rewrite this as a fraction, and it's going to be much easier for you in your brain to think of this as a fraction like so. So 2 to the 8th divided by 2 to the 6th, let's think of it this way. Okay, so kind of hold that in your brain. So uh, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is supposed to be you know, uh, you know, know, easily <laughs> solved with just using my brain. Well, we're going to get to it right now. So here's the thing. If we can figure out what this is, what 2 to the 8th times 2 to the 6th is equal to, whatever value this is, whatever number this is, right? If we can figure this out, so if we have this number, okay, all we have to do then is multiply that number times 7, and we are done. So really, again, uh, probably the most challenging part, well, not the most, uh, probably, uh, for sure, most people who are going to struggle with this problem are going to struggle right here. So let's go ahead and uh, see how easy it is uh, to um, figure out the uh, answer to this uh, part of the problem. Okay, so 2 to the 8th. What is a power? What is an exponent and a base and whatnot? Well, 2 to the 8th means, okay, take 2, all right, take this number and multiply this number by itself 8 times. Okay, so this literally means... Take two and multiply by itself eight times. I have eight uh, twos right here. Right, we can count them off real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so two to the eighth, this is what this means. Okay, this is what we call the expanded form of a power. So two to the six means, hey, I'm going to take two and I'm going to multiply it by itself six times like so. So we have two times two times two times two times two times two. All right, now... Before I show you how easy it is to figure this out, let's take an even easier version of this problem. All right, so if I uh, ask you uh, 5 over 10, what is this equal to, okay, as a fraction? How could I simplify this? What's the answer to 5 over 10? Well, hopefully, 
uh, you'll say, oh, that's one half, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Don't bore me with these silly little uh, easy questions. Well, there's a point here I'm going to make. So 5 over 10 is equal to one half. We all know that. So what's going on here? Well, 5 over 10, what you're really doing when you're simplifying is you're cross-counting the like factors. So 10, uh, let's think of this as, as 5 times 2. Okay, so really most people when you reduce a fraction, you're really doing the following. So this is 5 over 5 times 2, which of course is 5 over 5 times 2 is 10. It's the same prompt. But uh, why is this equal to 1 half? Because you, if you have one factor in the numerator and you have the exact same factor in the denominator, you could just simply cross cancel 1 from 1. Now up here, I could write this as 5 times 1. 5 times 1 is 5. And so we're just left with 1 over 2, which is 1 half. And that's how you simplify fractions. Okay, so you need to understand that. And again, you know, I asked you, are you good with numbers, basic mathematics? If you said yes, well, then this should be pretty straightforward stuff. Okay, now uh, here is where we're at then. We have eight twos in the, in the numerator and six twos down in the denominator. So we could just simply start cr uh, cross canceling uh, one, two, four, another two, right? So here, 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 here. And we can go on and on and on. But most of us, hopefully we'll see, well, if I have eight twos up here and six twos down here, so I have six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I could cross cancel one, two, three, four, five, six right here. These six twos will cross cancel with these six twos. And what does this leave me? It just leaves me two twos up in the numerator. And of course, there's always a one uh, when we cross cancel. So what do you think this is going to be equal to? Well, if you said four, you would be absolutely correct. So let's go ahead and uh, kind of simplify this. So two to the eighth divided by two to the sixth. Uh, when we do all, when we just cross cancel, we have eight twos up in the numerator, six twos down here. So these uh, six will uh, take care of six up here, leaving two uh, squared. So that's two times two or four. Now, some of you who are really, really good in mathematics uh, may know that when you are dividing powers with the same base, you literally can just subtract the exponents like this and you get the same answer, two squared is four. So if you looked at it that way, well, that's even more impressive. Okay, so this again is probably the uh, most challenging part of the problem, but again, there's no time limit to, to doing this. You just have to kind of focus in and really think about, all right, what's going on here? But let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I definitely could use your support. My goal is to try to make math fun, interesting, but most importantly, uh, try to make math un clear and un understandable, okay? Especially for people who want to learn math and who struggle with math or maybe just don't like math because they don't think they can learn it or they're just not good at math. If you, if this is you, okay, if you don't think you're strong in math, well, I'm telling you right now, that is not true, okay? You can be successful in math. You can go uh, as far, far as you want, more or less, okay? Uh, do you want to get a PhD in mathematics? Well, you know, I'll be truthful to you. Math at the very, very, very advanced levels becomes, you know, very difficult indeed. But you could certainly learn way more math than you probably think you can, especially if you struggled with math. But you just got to be committed. But most importantly, you need great full instruction. And that's what I'm passionate about. But I can't reach people that uh, need my help unless I get people subscribing to my channel. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell as well so you get my latest videos. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this prom up now. So remember, there's no time limit to do this prom. You just, what you need is focus, laser beam focus. And you don't, uh, you know, you need, you need laser beam focus, not only with mental math, but just in anything you do that you want to do well, like driving a car, right? You, you want to remain highly focused, right? You're pretty sure like airline pilots need to be highly focused or, you know, uh, anybody does anything. Okay, Even if you play a video game for some of those people out there that love uh, playing video games, you're focused, you're engaged, you're paying attention. And it's no different in mathematics, okay? But you have to be, you know, really thinking and fully, you know, engaged. And if you are focused and you, you're pretty good with, you know, numbers and basic mathematical concepts, 
then this should be pretty easy. So again, say we have 2 to the 8th. You're saying, all right, 2 to the 8th. I'll think of this as a fraction. There's 8 twos up in the numerator. There's 6 twos down in the denominator. These 6 twos will take care of 6 twos up here, leaving uh, 2 twos in the numerator. So this is all going to be equal to 4. And 7 times 4, of course, is 28. All right, now don't feel bad if you weren't able to do this, uh, but if you learn something here, okay, that, well, you know, uh, to me, that is a nice victory, and hopefully it was worthwhile watching this video. Now, uh, one of the things you can do if you want to practice mental mathematics, or just maybe you learn math or get better at math, it is a great use of your time. Okay, me personally, I mean, I know I like watching movies and doing things like that, but I like to make an investment in myself. I always like to learn something. So if you have been away from math for some time and maybe you want to really learn, uh, learn math, I got two uh, great courses uh, for you to consider if you want to learn from me. So the first is my Math Foundations course. It's a little mini uh, course. It's only three chapters. It's all basic math. Uh, so if you are very you know, uh, you know, not confident in your basic math skills, this is a perfect little starter course. But if you want to kind of take it to, uh, the next step, right, and you say, well, yeah, I want to learn more than basic math, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I kind of like to learn algebra and geometry. You know, I knew I could learn that stuff in high school way back in 1970-something or 1980-something, or maybe 1960-something. Well, then check out my new course. It's Math Skills Rebuilder. And in that course, I teach you everything in this course, basic math, but I also teach you a ton of algebra, uh, geometry, some basic trigonometry, and even some probability and statistics. And if you've never really understood, you know, uh, these topics or subjects in school, okay, looking back many years ago, I can tell you right now, uh, you will do very well with this. But of course, you take your time. There's no pressure. And it's just basically a step-by-step -step process to build up your math skills, which of course will benefit you on many levels. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.